Welcome back. This is the Allegheny Northern in N scale, and today we are going to be talking about weathering. And before we get into it, oh, we're all hot and heavy here. Um, a couple of things that I'm going to go through um, right off the bat. This is going to be kind of an introduction to weathering. So if you are a beginner, this is where you would start. If you're more advanced, you may want to skip ahead here uh, just a little bit as I go through sort of the process. Uh, of weathering and some of the options available. This might be kind of uh, rudimentary to some of you. So let's talk about weathering. Uh, weathering is uh, in, in nature, in, in, in the real world, let's say. Weathering is just the process by which um, something ages. So how the weather affects it, how time affects it. Um, steel will rust, wood will rot, um, you know, paint will fade. That's all weathering and it happens in the real world. So when we talk about weathering and modeling, we're talking about mimicking that process on our layouts. Obviously, we don't want our models to become decrepit as things do in real life, but we want to make them look that way. So we want to model the rust, we want to model the dirt, we want to model the grime. Now, where your layout is situated will determine a lot upon what the rust and the dirt and the grime will look like. So, for instance, if you are modeling a railroad that is seaside, um, or, or coastal in any way, then you're going to have a lot of salty air, which is very caustic. That means things rust really, really fast. Uh, wood sort of dry rots and just it gets nasty because the air is full of a lot of moisture and that moisture contains salt and that just uh, attributes to the erosion process of, of materials. Um, now, if you're more mountainous, you may have um, snow to contend with. Um, and, and if you're more desert, you've got a lot more sun, dry heat, cracking, and stuff like that from, from the heat. So the first thing that I'm going to recommend you do before you weather anything is take a look at some photographs from the areas in which you're modeling and, and make the weathering appropriate. So um, if you're in an area that gets a lot of sun, fading is going to be huge for you. If you're in an area that is um, maybe a lot more cloudy or... Uh, a lot more tropical, you need to look and see what those weather conditions look like because that's how your models are going to uh, be affected. Now, there are many different ways that you can do modeling um, and uh, as far as weathering goes. And that is, there are many products out there. And the easiest and probably the one that gives some of the most satisfying results is an airbrush. And I know a lot of you folks said, well, I don't have an airbrush, okay? Uh, my first uh, advice to you is get an airbrush. Um, they are relatively inexpensive. My, my airbrush kit, um, this was my first uh, start. Um, I got uh, an airbrush. It was a air, two-stage two um, airbrush, which is, means you can control the air and you can control the, um, the paint output. Um, and I got my, my two-stage airbrush from uh, Harbor Freight of all places. So, I mean, it, I didn't spend a whole lot. I think the whole kit came to about 120 bucks. That got me my compressor, my airbrush. Great little training airbrush. It's not the most highest quality that's out there. But for learning, it was more than perfect. You know, I'm in the market now to move up in my airbrushing, but uh, I haven't done it yet because, quite frankly, everything I've needed to do, the old one is still doing. So, uh, we're going to cover some airbrushing. The second one is... Um, weathering powders and that is something that's probably a lot easier for a lot of folks because uh, weathering powders are um, readily available to hobby shops and they are uh, relatively inexpensive so um, the airbrushing we'll cover here in a minute because that's sort of a, a you know basic technique but um, the thing that I wanted to show you is as far as the um, powders go um, I'm sure all of you have seen the trays of pan pastels, uh, and so these are an excellent source. I have a basic kit here. I've added a few to it, um, but you know that's a great start. Another option that you have is uh, various companies. This is Monroe Models, but they make weathering powders as well. And I'm going to caution you, there is an old technique that is out there that involves... Um, crushing up artist pastels. And I know, I think it was a trip to Michael's or yeah, some other um, some other craft store. I found a earth-toned uh, pastel. And this is actually where I uh, began my weathering. And you can see that some of them are very well loved and worn down. And so basically what you do is you'll take a, a palette or something where you can 
uh, drag a sharp blade across this and generate a powder from the pastel and then you apply that to your model. I don't recommend this technique um, because the pastel does not have uh, a, a pigment binder in it. Um, and so what ends up happening is um, you have to seal it, um, which we're gonna seal ours anyway, but it just doesn't stick as well. So uh, we're, I'm not gonna teach you that technique. It's the same as using um, the better products that are out there, but um, just so that you're aware that that is an option. And then the last thing that you can always do is you can get into um, pigments from, say, AK Interactive. Um, they have a pigment line, which is meant to actually make a paint out of it. Now, I'll show you how that works if you haven't seen some of the other videos. Um, but there's also um, enamels that you can use that are basically washes. So uh, to weather these three boxcars that you see here, we're going to use a combination of all of these methods. So we're going to use... Um, we're going to use the powders, we're going to use the washes, and we're going to use the airbrush. And I picked three models um, that I had that are all the same, so I can show you the three techniques on the same model. I think a lot of times what happens is you get a perspective from one model or another, and, and it might not be the same. Like, you're going to weather um, gondolas different than you're going to weather boxcars, and, and those are going to weather different than tank cars. But the techniques I'm going to teach you here um, are going to be sort of a, a universal thing. You can use them on all the cars, uh, and it'll just be a matter of you picking your uh, proper colors. Um, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to do uh, these three cars. I'm going to show you the techniques, get them weathered, uh, and then in a future video I'm going to show you uh, how to do a locomotive. So, okay, so first thing we want to do is uh, we want to take a look at our model and see what's going on uh, here uh, we want to be very careful that we don't jam up the couplers with paint and likewise we don't want to jam up the wheel sets so uh, where the wheel touches the rail we don't want to get any paint in there we will make sure we keep that protected um, and we don't want to get any paint inside the truck where the axle uh, point comes to an end and of course we don't want to get any paint on the axle point so through all of our techniques it will be keeping paint and powders and that sort of stuff uh, away from the trucks and for the first step, we are going to remove the trucks. Now these, I believe these are Atherin uh, models, these, these rail box cars, and they have um, screws on the bottom. So we're just gonna take the screws out and remove the trucks. And then you're gonna set them aside, um, the trucks and the, uh, um, uh, and the screws here. Now the couplers are, are body mounted. If you have a, um, uh, set that has uh, truck mounted couplers then everything's going to come off together and you can just move it off to the side and it's no big deal but uh, we're going to apply uh, paint and weathering to the wheels and the um, and the trucks we're just going to do it separately so I want to get this out of the way for now and one of the things that uh, all of these techniques are going to have in common is the first thing that we're going to do is apply a doll coat and the reason you do this is because you need the, the doll coat in order to uh, have things stick to it, basically. There's many different types of uh, uh, doll coat that are out there. Um, you have testers, which is actually called doll coat. Um, but any kind of lacquer, um, you know, that you have, there's, your, there's what you're looking for. Um, but uh, there, there's other versions. And as long as you're using something that is clear and matte, um, you're going to be fine. Don't use anything that has a gloss on it because if you spray it with a gloss, everything's going to shine. And the first thing you want to do is knock down the plastic shine of the bottle. Okay, you need to let your doll coat dry before you go on to the next step. Otherwise, your next steps are just going to get wasted because what's going to happen is um, your wet model is going to um, just take that powder in and it's gonna get all, it's gonna get funky on you so um, once your models dry um, and you're gonna kind of notice you're you may have a little bit of a spotty look to it um, that just means that you didn't uh, you didn't coat it evenly enough or it dried spotted don't freak out about that because by the time we're done you're not gonna notice it anyway um, but just be mindful of that uh, you're gonna spray this just like you were spraying something with an airbrush uh, for those of you who use the rattle cans, um, then you know that you start the paint uh, off the model and then you don't stop the paint until you're past the model with your with your stroke. Um, that way that you get a full coverage and you don't, you know, get that quick second where you pause to either start or stop it and get a heavy, heavy uh, 
output of, of paint or you know spray in this case for for the lacquer. But um, now that we're now that we're done, we're going to start talking about our powders. The most important thing to, 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 to realize in weathering is that you're building up in small layers and you're going to just keep building up as you go. So um, you don't want to go in there and, and, and go hard to the paint, um, quite literally, where you're just you know dumping thick coats on. This is a very light process and you build it up until it gets heavy to where you want it. So um, what we're going to use is... Uh, they're basically makeup sponges. Um, this is the Pan Pastel version of them. You can get actual makeup sponges. Um, there are other ones that kind of look like they got a they got a brush and a makeup applicator on one side. Um, so if you go through the um, makeup aisle uh, of your local store, um, you can probably find some pretty interesting brushes. Don't ask me what the actual you know purpose of these different brushes are. I just know what they do in modeling. So, um, but uh, you can also use some soft bristles. Um, you know, if you've got a very fine soft bristle brush, um, you know something that's very very soft, then that is also going to be um, a, a useful tool for you. And I keep my weathering brushes. Uh, out of circulation from the actual paint brushes because I don't want to get paint on them because I want them to stay soft and and basically just for powder. So um, just keep your equipment uh, sort of clean. Now, um, what you're going to do is um, you're going to take your, uh, your your whatever makeup sponge that you're using. And in this case, it's, this is the Pan Pastel uh, applicator, basically. And we, we're going to put a new cover on here and then we're going to get started right away um, with the first coat which is always going to be a lightening coat and what we're trying to do is lighten up the model we're trying to get that fade on so uh, i'm going to use probably you're going to see me using the monroe powders and the pan pastels interchangeably uh, it's just because i'm trying to get the correct color um, that to use. So uh, there's no difference in, it's not like I'm going to do one model in Pan Pastel and one in Monroe. It's just, it's the same technique no matter what you're, no matter what you're doing. So we're going to take our, our model here. Uh, this is, this is dried. And the first thing we want to do is we're going to take the, uh, it's sort of a beige color, I guess. Uh, and we're just going to apply it uh, over the entirety of the model. Um, and in this stage, don't get too excited about what it looks like uh, because we're going to come back and we're going to work it pretty heavy later. Um, so we just want to get this on here to sort of dull this down a little bit. And you can use either this makeup sponge or you can come in here with another soft bristled brush whichever one you want and sort of knock off the extra material because you don't want it sitting on there if it is indeed extra material. You want to get that. You only want the stuff that's sticking basically to stay on the model. So keep working the, keep working the, uh, the material until you get to a look that you want. Now, one thing that you will notice about this um, is that it's going to stick real well in places where you've applied the um, doll coat and it's not if you've missed an area that doesn't have any doll coat on it uh, you're going to uh, you're going to see that it doesn't stick as well so uh, that that doll coat really gives it a the bite it needs to stick now the other thing um, that you're going to want to um, remember too is that your doll coat is sort of a, a reset button um, so if you put on some powder and you don't like it, um, then with a damp uh, cloth, not, not soaking wet, but damp, you'll be able to remove most of the powder and start over again. So as far as uh, weathering techniques go, this is probably the most forgiving um, because it lets you basically restart. Um, any of the powders will come off with a damp cloth. In fact, you can actually use that, um, as I'm going to show you here in a bit, uh, as a technique for for doing the weathering uh, to sort of take off some of the material because in some instances it, it's going to apply either too heavy or you're going to want a more streaking effect um, and being able to um, take some of it off is 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 definitely valuable. 
Don't forget your model has four sides and you are going to want to get weathering powder on all four of those sides. Um, so we're going to go ahead and make sure that we, we do that. Your weathering, uh, as far as your fading, is going to occur over the entire model, but for the most part, it's going to be on the higher areas that are more likely to see the, the sun. So make sure you pay special attention to those areas. Okay, so our first coat's gonna look something like that. Um, when I'm working on, on models, I like to have these sponges available. And these are sponges that I've collected over, over time. Most of them come from um, either locomotive or model kits. Um, so when you find a sponge that's in there, um, I save them because it's a great place to be able to put models down uh, where it's not on a hard surface and it won't damage the model while you're working on it. Okay, so uh, I didn't like how much of this powder stuck to this door. So I'm just going to take my damp cloth and I'm going to take some of it off and I'm going to kind of go for a little bit of a random pattern just so that it doesn't look um, like I just cleaned the door. Um, I just want to get it off on some of the areas where I, it's just a little too heavy. You can do this with a brush, with a Q-tip, um, anything that you can basically scrub a little bit of the material off with. Um, and then, of course, before you go and apply another layer, um, you're going to want to make sure that this is dry, otherwise you're going to get your powders wet and that's going to sort of ruin the effect. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to use here is a, it's called a stenciling brush, and it's, uh, it's a little stiffer than I would normally like, but the technique that I got from it was, was rewarding, so that's why I'm going to recommend it. And I'm going to move in an up and down motion over the door, um, and I'm still just using the powders, obviously. But uh, I want to create, and the reason I'm only going up and down is because I'm using this to create a streaking effect with a light brown. Um, and I'm using just the, the tip of the brush. You know, so basically it's a very flat, stiff brush, and I'm using the, the forward uh, tips of it to put the material on the car in the areas that I think that this brown dirt will... Uh, up here. Now, this is a good time to point out that you don't want both sides of your car to look the same. Um, so, you know, there's going to be different weathering on, on both sides of the car, and you want to avoid patterns um, because in nature, uh, there's not very many patterns um, on, on weathering as far as um, you know, it's not going to be like every other panel is going to get weathered. So we don't want to, to mimic that in any way. And we just want to sort of keep it, um, sort of fluid, sort of, you know, natural looking, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, and, and so if you find that you're getting yourself stuck in a pattern, uh, with your, with your weathering, um, then you need to take a quick break and stop and just kind of look at everything because, um, it's not going to look realistic on your. Uh, it's not going to look realistic on your layout with, with a car that's uniformly weathered. Uh, and likewise, if you're doing multiple cars of the same type, uh, you need to be careful that you don't weather all. You know, in this case, like three of them, in the same, in the same colors and in the same pattern, because it's going to look. Uh, it's going to look factory done, and that's kind of not what you're, what you're looking for here. So. Feel free to make both sides look uh, a little bit different, and that will definitely help convince um, you know, viewers that your that your trains are are not <laughs> factory done and not the same. Dirt is going to accumulate in certain areas on all car types, so um, we don't want to forget about that either. So where there's some kind of a ridge or some sort of a uh, an obstruction that was going to collect dirt, say ladders or something like that, the, uh, the rails where the boxcar doors slide, um, you're going to want to hit those areas because they are going to pick up the dirt and the grime. The other areas that you're going to want to focus on are the areas where um, they might get picked up uh, by uh, dirt from the trucks. So uh, definitely take a look at that area. And then once you've you know gotten some color onto your model, I'm coming back here with just a soft brush. You can use either an actual paintbrush or another um, uh, another makeup brush or something. And I'm just 
fanning all of these colors together. Um, and when I get somewhere color-wise that I like, I stop. Now, in order to get this model um, to, to maintain its, its colors um, through the weathering process, you're, you're going to need to spray it again, and you're going to lose a lot of that color um, that you put on when you when you dull coat this. It's just a it's just a matter of the way the process goes. So you may need to put several coats on. Um, I haven't found a good way around this. It's just something that's going to happen. So when you when you go to spray this, um, it's just that that liquid when it hits the the lacquer when it hits there, it's just going to take some of the paint color off. So this process is not going to give you a um, completely um, you know, perfect, very well detailed look. It's just, it's just not, it's not going to do that. Um, you, you need to use an actual paintbrush for that, for that look. So I'm just coming back in here now. I've got a, uh, uh, a very fine rust color and I'm just hitting this, this door because these doors get banged up. Um, so they take on a lot of damage from just being used. And so I want to replicate that. Once again, then just sort of blending all of my colors in with a soft brush again. Okay, um, so you can decide exactly how much or, or how little weathering that you actually want to do. Um, I'm going to come over the top of this roof now with a, it's an olive color. And so your, your roof is angled. And so what happens is your rainwater and your dirt basically wash in two directions. So you would have your dirt down the center ridge line, and then you would have it uh, you know, streaking off onto either side. So dark brown and olive color is what I'm gonna use up here to simulate that, that grime. And once again, I'm starting in the middle, I'm just kinda wiggling it back and forth, so to speak, to get it off on either side here. And then we're gonna come back in with our soft brush and knock off the excess. And then we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna use our stenciling brush again, and we're just gonna put some rust down the down the center. Kind of work that in. Now this is a, the other nice thing about using these pigments is that when you when you use these um, like the pan pastel they have a binder already in them so that the pigment will actually stick when you press it in a little bit harder. So you can get a defined roof line like that you know, once again, don't don't focus too much on on heavy detail because you're going to lose some of it when you spray the model. So all these colors are going to lighten up a little bit. But um, you know, that's just that's just uh, a nice feature that you can get that sort of uh, somewhat detail in there, um, and, and it's nice that you can uh, get them to stick. You're not going to get that from the artist. Uh, crushed up artist pastels it just doesn't doesn't stick like that so just going back here and you know you want to tie the roof in so if you've got a dirty panel you want to make sure that the roof right above it is also dirty um, because that you know that's all going to be dirt that's coming off the roof and and down the side so you want to kind of blend these two together once you get it you know figured out as to how it's going to look if you're trying to copy an actual photograph um, and you're not just going from okay this looks good by eyeball then uh, you know you'll you'll see naturally where that where that dirt wants to be or needs to be. Okay. Depending on the the model that you're working with too, you may want to have gloves on because you don't want to get your fingerprints. You know, the oils from your skin can sort of leave fingerprints. Now, um, what we're doing here is is not resulting in that for me, so I'm not uh, I don't have the gloves on, but. Um, depending on how oily your skin is and and whatnot, you you may need to you may need to look at that. So um, here we've got just showing you the two different. Here's a here's a weathered car, you know, versus the unweathered car. 
Um, it, this one looks like it's been on the road for a while, and this one looks like it's right out of the paint shop. So um, you can uh, do minimal weathering on, on a car um, that I'm going to show you and, and to make it look like it's a newer car. So that's that's definitely a technique. But this is where we're going to stop with this guy. Um, so he's dirty, um, but he's not, you know, war beaten, um, you know, where you'd have a bunch of, let's say, uh, scratch marks, rust marks. It's just, it looks dirty. Um, now we got to do the trucks for this. So let's pause and do the trucks. Um, I'm also going to put a final coat of dull coat on here and show you what that looks like. Okay, powders are not my favorite way to weather the trucks, but I'm going to do it uh, on, on these ones to show you that you can do it. Um, so all I've done here is I've taken some masking tape and I've placed it on the inside of the model because I want to protect those areas where the, um, the axles um, we're going to are going to point into you don't want to get anything in there uh, it's going to make your wheels just not spin as well so mask them off and then you're going to spray the remaining areas with with a, a nice quick layer of dull coat if you have a uh, liquid mask product you can use that here too to, uh, instead of the masking tape uh, anything that you can really get in there to to stop the um, powders and the uh, dull coat mainly the dull coat from getting in there um, it, it is really all you need. Uh, now I'm just hitting this area with some, uh, it's like a burnt umber um, color of pan pastel. And I really just want to get this nice and coated. It's going to do a couple of things here. It's going to, one, it's going to bring out the um, details in the truck. So I know you've probably seen plenty of videos on YouTube where the truck details, especially on N scale. Uh, models, even some on HO, it just looks like there's a dark shadow underneath there. And that's because, um, you know, it's just everything's painted black underneath the model and it just everything disappears. But you've got all this beautiful detail that's modeled into your trucks, your springs, your, your, your journal boxes, all that stuff. And when you weather, you, you bring that detail out and you can see it in, in the forefront. So um, I hit it with a little bit of uh, like a dark umber. And then I hit it with a little bit of light rust color and now just a little bit more of that white to sort of fade it down. Um, and now you can see the, the truck detail. So I'm going to hit the other side. Uh, same process. Um, there's nothing really uh, complicated about the trucks. They just um, they look a little more uniform than the cars themselves do. Um, and then we'll go ahead and spray it with dull coat one more time just to seal everything in there and yeah it's a lot easier using the uh, tweezers to hold it in place this is not my favorite way to to uh, weather trucks the the painting is is better um, but I just wanted to uh, just want to be able to show you that you can do it um, you know if you if you want uh, unfortunately with the coupler you've got to paint the couplers um, you don't want you just you can't dull coat them so um, you, you want them to stay functional, basically. And if you dull coat them and, and powder them, then they're just, they're just going to jam up on you. And that's no good. So where I use the lightning powder, you know, the lighter powder to sort of add the fade first on the car, I do it second on the trucks because I want that, that dust look to come out. That's going to be what's going to be most prominent on these things, uh, from dust from the, from the ballast. So that's kind of how I want it to look. And I'm just going to take it off, off camera here and give it a quick dull coat to seal those colors in. Okay, so I've got a Vallejo 70.941. It is burnt umber. And I'm going to use that um, on the inside of my trucks. Now, when you do this, uh, this is a very careful step. You need a very fine point, very good shape brush. Um, so if you don't have one of those, don't do this step until you get one. Um, this is not a fancy brush. This is a Walmart pickup brush. Um, but see the point where that goes into your, um, truck. Do not paint that. Don't get any paint on that. Don't even, don't even, you know, think about getting paint near that. You will, uh, not like the results. So, uh, the rest of this, however, um, you do want to paint all the round area around it and 
you do not want to paint the tread where the um, where the wheel actually touches the uh, rail. Uh, I know that there's a you know there's a feeling like oh I want to make it look silver so it looks like it's being worn. Uh, I don't recommend it. Uh, it's just not going to run as nice. You're going to have a coating on there. Um, and this is whether you're doing a metal wheel set or a plastic wheel set. I don't care. Uh, just keep it off your tread. Make sure you get this area looking nice and coated. Keep it off the point. If you get it on the point, um, then just take your uh, paper towel that's nearby uh, and try to take it off. Uh, you can also wait till it dries, which is kind of how I recommend. Wait till it dries so that you don't smear more paint on the area. And then uh, dent gently with a Q-tip or something, kind of take it off the point. But that's what you're looking for right there to give your uh, wheel set a weathered look. So we're going to do this to um, all the wheels, and then once they dry, we're going to stick them back in the truck. Okay, so while your uh, trucks are still off, uh, we're going to go ahead and paint the couplers. And we're using that same burnt umber from the wheel set, and we're just going to apply it to the coupler. Be very careful, pay attention to see where your coupler um, has its pivot points, so where the uh, spring is attached and where the where the coupler actually opens and you want to avoid getting paint in those areas um, Usually if you get a little bit of paint in there, you can kind of snap them open later uh, without damaging the coupler um, But if you paint them shut then you've pretty much uh, that's pretty much the end of that. So um, be very careful usually use your fine tip brush again and Spend just a little bit extra time making sure you get the areas. Now, I, I realize I've painted over that crack there a little bit, but once again, that's just a small area, so um, I'll probably be able to crack that open. Uh, the couplers that have the exterior springs are a little bit more uh, tricky because you just you can't paint that area. Um, but the ones like the micro trains that have the internals obviously paint a little bit better. Um, so it doesn't really matter which which one you have. I still I still give it a College try, and once we get our coupler painted, uh, we're going to let that coat dry um, before we go in with a little bit of, of detailing. The other thing that is if you leave your trip pins on, I know some of you cut the trip pins off, whatever, whatever. if, you, if it's still on, um, we can uh, paint those black again, uh, just assuming that we've you know, got a little bit of brown paint on it like we did here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and paint those black, uh, and then we'll come back for the final detailing. Okay, this next step is something that I never see anybody do, um, but I like to do it because I think it adds just that one extra little bit of detail. And that is, so your couplers are going to get smacked around, um, you know, from either being coupled or, or uncoupled. But anyway, they're going to get scratched up. So I'd like to take a little bit of silver, and this is um, any silver, you know, kind of metallic -y color will, will work. But this, uh, the one that I'm using here, is a Vallejo 80.052. Uh, um, and the, like I said, any, any metallic silver that you have will work. And I like to just put a little bit of that on the knuckles right where they're going to smack um to give that scratched off paint look and once again i'm using my very fine brush um and i'm just i'm just kind of sketching that in real quick don't want to overdo it just give it a little bit of uh you know character showing that it's it's worn uh if your couplers are coupled then no one will ever see that if they're not coupled um then it looks like um you know that they had been or recently were this is an optional step. You don't need to do it. I like to do it because I think it gives it a little something that most models don't have. And it's just a real quick, you know, real quick brush just to nip the ends there a little bit and give it a sort of a scratch look. So with that, um, we are done weathering this particular car. And so um, to kind of show you what, what it ends up looking like. Uh, and the I uh, just want the camera to pick up the the best lighting here, but um, it is uh, definitely uh, weathered. Um, it, it's the colors are uh, a little bit darker than they're showing up on on, on camera. Um, I just 
It's just the way the camera's catching it. But it gives you that sense that the car has some miles on it, and it's better than being right out of the package. And, of course, um, we have not put uh, a single airbrush to use here. So uh, this technique is nice, especially if you're just beginning one, because it lets you... Uh, it's, it's the most forgiving of all the techniques. So every time you put a dull coat layer on, and you can dull coat as often as you'd like, uh, every time you put a dull coat layer on, that's basically a reset point. So everything you've done to that point is um, saved and you can wipe everything after that off with a damp paper towel. So if you are nervous about trying on a, um, on a new model, uh, that's the way to do it. However, um, this is probably the most limited, in my opinion, as far as powders go. Um, as far as techniques go with the powder, it's probably the most limited in the results that you can get. Um, but you know, if you just want to add a little bit of basic color to your models and give it a little bit of a, uh, you know, weathered look as opposed to, um, brand new out of the plastic look, then this is, uh, this is definitely a way to go. Okay. We're going to go ahead and set this aside and let's talk about using some washes.